So let me head over here to Ed. Now, we're gonna be talking about things with Azure DevOps. Now, Azure DevOps lets you do all kinds of things to help make your projects better. Now, I've been working on some projects on stream and I haven't written my code in a way that works really well with continuous integration or pipelines. Ed, can you help me out with that? Why don't you let folks know who you are and let's see what we can do to work on this. Sure, sure. Yeah, so my name is Edward Thompson. I'm a program manager at Microsoft. I work on the Azure DevOps team and my focus is kind of two areas. One is Git and version control. And the other is Azure Pipelines, which is our continuous integration and continuous delivery system. Now, I had a question earlier today from someone. What's, is there a difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment? You know, uh, there's a lot of these terminologies that kind of get muddled and, and thrown around. Oh, and, yeah. You know, some people will say continuous integration is really only when you're building the master branch and mm. not pull request validation. And some people kind of lump the continuous integration term to mean both things. Okay. And then uh, continuous delivery uh, and continuous deployment, again, gets a little questionable. Like, um, what, what is a deployment? Or if you go to a staging server, is mm -hmm. that continuous mm -hmm. deployment? Like, if I check in and, and it automates the deployment all the way to staging, is that continuous deployment? Does it have to go to production? So. These are all good questions. I, I think continuous delivery is what all those shipping folks are going to be doing here through the holiday season. Just right. continuous delivery. That's right. So I've shared with you a little bit about a project I've been working on on my Twitch stream, mm -hmm. where I've been building some, some tools for streamers to be able to build extension, to use um, web pages and things to enhance their, their interaction on their stream. And I've never gotten Azure Pipelines to build quite right for it. And I, I started building it so it could go into a Docker container. Right. What are, what are the steps I can take to make that happen so it builds and gets into that container? And then it'd be really great if I could deploy it. Well, let me show you. All right, let's do yeah. it. So actually, I've got your, your project right here. OK. It's, it's here on GitHub. Uh, C sharp Fritz slash Fritz dot stream tools. This is the one, right? That's the one. Right. That's that's the violator. Right. And it's uh, it's an open source project. Everything's open source. Yeah. Absolutely. And I know that because I actually contributed a, a change. To yes. It. I opened a pull request yesterday. I was really, really pleased about that. And you took it. Of course. Oh well, you know. Of course. My, my code isn't always the best. <laughs> that's why they made me a program manager, right? Oh man. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to the first thing I'm going to do is um, is fork your repository. So I'm going to make a copy of it in my account. I don't mind. Go ahead. You right. can take a copy. So I'm just going to click fork, and I've already, like I said, I've I've been working on this a little Practicing. bit. Practicing. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm going to find this one. I've got this. Uh, this is a GitHub organization I set up just to to manage this. Okay. I'm going to. Fork it right into there. Just takes a second. I love that that little image. Yeah, I know, we're me copying too. it. It's the old copy machine. That's right. Uh, and then after that, the easiest way to get set up with Azure Pipelines is through the GitHub Marketplace. So uh, Azure Pipelines actually has a GitHub Marketplace extension, and that is by far the simplest way to get started. Um, so all you have to do is scroll over here to the continuous integration section. Okay. Click there and you will find Azure Pipelines right there. Oh my gosh. So get started. And of course, uh, it's totally free for open source projects. So all I have to do is hit set up a new plan. I'm, I've got this free plan, that's great, that's all I need. And I select the account. Like I said, I've got a couple of GitHub organizations, so I've already got it um, set up. So I'm gonna select this one, the one that I just um, forked. Just forked into. That's right. Yeah. And then just click install it for free. So no no charges for open source projects, totally free, unlimited build minutes per month, and all I have to do is click complete. Once I do, it'll bring me over to uh, Azure Pipelines. I'm going to select the repository that I want to use. That's the one I just forked. Click install. It's going to make me enter my password just to confirm. It's going to make me log in to uh, Azure DevOps. Click that account right there. and. So if you've never used uh, Azure DevOps before, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and, and get started, create a new organization. I'm going to reuse one that I've already, I've already set up. Okay. I, I went ahead and set one up for, uh, for today. And the reason that I did that is so that I could create a project and so that I could, over here, this is Azure DevOps. This is the project I created. Um, what I needed to do is, is add some secrets. 
Okay. Didn't want to type them in here. No, probably not a good idea. Right. All of a sudden, I'll be Bitcoin mining before the end of the talk. Uh, so, I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally leaked a key right. on my Twitch stream. Right. Oops. I totally believe it. So, uh, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and set up uh, a, a set of variables that we can reuse later that have those secret keys in there. So, so all right, variables. Are, are those variables that are uh, available throughout my build? They are. They are. So uh, Azure Pipeline sets up a number of variables itself. Okay. Uh, but you can also add variables either um, right here is the, the easiest way to do it. This is a, a library. I can just give variables names. Some of them are just normal variables. Some of them are secure. So this won't actually show up. There's no way to see this. You won't see it in the pipeline. You can't echo it out, things like that. Awesome. Um, and that's the password for the container registry that we're going to publish to. All right. So again, you know, don't don't want to leak that out. No, 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 no. Right. So so here we are. So GitHub's taking us to Azure Pipelines, and we're going to go ahead and set up. We're just going to select the repository we want to build. And when we do, Azure Pipelines is actually going to analyze it and look at the code that's in there and try to come up with the best template. Best match. Yeah. All right. And it, it looks at your code, notices it's a .NET project. OK. It suggests that we build a .NET app. I don't want to do that, though. OK. OK. I want to build a Docker image instead. And that's one of the other templates we have. Yeah. All right. Because you actually want to do this nice modern uh, deployment system. You want to build your .NET Core app into a Docker image. You want to deploy the Docker image. And so we've got first class support for that as well. Yeah. My thinking is if this is a set of tools that, that folks that are running streams want to, want to use, Put down your own little image, configure it with everything for your stream, for your project, and run it wherever you'd like, on your local machine, in the cloud, wherever makes sense to you. Yeah, I think that totally makes sense. Um, I, I love that sort of, a, sort of a setup, but it's not something that I'm super familiar with, so I'm, we're going to hope that I don't screw anything up as we go, because um, you know, the code I write is like old school native code these days. OK. So All right. you know, this, this newfangled modern world I'm not super familiar with. So let's, let's see if modern we can get it right. Modern world of YAML. <laughs> of YAML, that's right. That's right. And hey, here we've got some YAML. Yeah. So listen, if you're one of our friends out there hanging out in the chat room over there on Twitch, make sure you send over your questions that you might have for us about, about uh, Azure Pipelines. And uh, or anything about the project that we've been working on, and the moderators will pass them along to us, and we'll be happy to answer them. Absolutely, you. absolutely. Um, so, so right. So this is the default YAML for building a Docker image. I just want to make a few tweaks to it, okay? Um, based on based on what you want. So first of all, um, the first thing we want to do is select where we're going to do the build. Um, we support uh, cloud hosted builds for Linux, for Windows, and for Mac OS. But for a Docker sort of setup, mm -hmm. I think I think. Ubuntu is obviously the right way to go. Oh, nice one to use. Yeah. Um, so second, here's the variable section. So I can uh, I can define variables here also that will be used throughout the build process. Uh, and I want to change this a little bit. I want to use the array syntax instead. Um, so I'm going to set a variable that has a name of image name. So I'm just going to change this and a value. We're going to change that from your container image name. We're going to call it Fritz dot Stream tools, and oh, you got a typo in there. I do. Thank you. Pair programming. Pair programming, indeed. Absolutely. And then I'm going to bring in uh, that group of that variable group that I defined earlier. So okay. that's got all the Azure secrets. So now I can actually refer to those. Um, do and you need a hyphen in front of value? No, I don't. Okay. So it's it's name value. I don't know my YAML. I'm learning, but I think this is right. I think this is right. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to set the Docker file that we want to build. Mm -hmm. And that should all be good. So that's going to uh, run that Docker file, build that Docker image, and tag it with that. Uh, and once that's built, I want to do one more thing. I want to take that Docker image that's built and publish it up to my Azure container registry. OK, so we have a private registry for our images that it's our working place. It's, it's not public, but it's someplace that we can share these containers from. That's exactly right. And that's why I needed that username and password. I could publish up to Docker Hub. That's no problem. I'd probably need to authenticate there, too. Um, but I want to, there we go. Uh, I want to publish to my Azure Container Registry. So the first thing I need to do is 
run Docker login, and then I can Docker tag that image again. So it's got that tag. It's going to be called you know Fritz.streamtools. Mm -hmm. I also want to tag it uh, with the container registry in the name. Oh yeah, and then I can Docker push that image. If I can type it, there we go. All right. So uh, and let's give it a display name so that it looks nice when we see it. Okay. So yeah. So we're going to build this Docker image. We're going to push the Docker image to our private container registry. Let me just make one, take one more look, make sure. Nope, I missed a closing parentheses. There we go. So that all looks good. We'll authenticate, we'll tag it, and then we'll push it. So when I click Save and Run, it's so, going to kick off our build. OK, that's too quick for me. My gosh. So all right, display name you, that you put down there at the bottom, that's the display name for this step. For, yeah, for this job, for this step in the, in the build task. Okay. That's right. And I, and I get the scripts. That makes sense. Okay. I'm used to seeing those because I'll run them locally on my machine so that I can push to a container registry. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, my, the way I think about um, continuous integration builds is that I want it to be as similar as possible to the development build. Okay. Uh, because that's familiar. Sure. Now, Kirsten has a good question in the in the chat room. Um, what if I wanted to add unit tests into this and fail in the middle of it? Is that a, is that just another step? It's just another step. Yeah. You, I mean, you can just run whatever commands. You know, you could uh, so you could run .dot net .dot net test .dot net test. That's okay. exactly right. And then run the test, and then if any of them fail, it gets a non-zero return code. It'll stop. It'll stop. Fantastic. That's exactly okay. right. And then you can even uh, publish the build. Uh, sorry, the test results up into Azure, Azure Pipeline so that you can actually examine the tests and look at, uh, ah. kind of drill down and see what failed. Oh, it's and very what cool. program manager doesn't love test results and numbers, that meters and things that they can look at? I do love all of that. Oh, yeah. So when I click Save and Run, what it's going to do is it's actually going to take this YAML, check it into my repository on GitHub. That's why I forked it, because I can't sure. check into yours. Um, at least until you, know, you give me that commit. Until I that, accept and that's right. give you that commit. Yeah. So, uh, so I'll click Save and Run. And uh, what that's going to do is it's going to kick off our first build. So okay. it's going to create the first uh, Docker image and, and upload it. OK. And it, it uploads to the registry. Now, eventually, I'll be able to push that out to an Azure, right? I'll be able to do a release and that's push right. that to, a, to an Azure app service or, or a container service. Right. Now, um, Kelcomnet in the chat room is asking, they're currently using Jenkins to build and deploy to servers mm -hmm. behind a firewall. Can, can DevOps deploy to those on-premise? It absolutely can, yeah. Okay, so not the, just to Azure. Not just to Azure. That's okay. one of the really cool things about Azure Pipelines is you can kind of mix and match on-premises and cloud, however you want to do it. So, you know, we have build agents in the cloud for you for, um, again, uh, Linux, Windows, and Mac OS, so mm -hmm. you can take advantage of those. But if you have some infrastructure on premises that you want to use, maybe you've got some complicated uh, dependencies that you need to set up and you want to mm. do it once on your computer and then hide it under a desk and never touch it again. Oh, yeah. Then you can install uh, the, the build agent on that. And so you can actually um, build with a mix and match of on premises and cloud build agents. But the same is true for release. So you can release either to a cloud, yeah. whether that's Azure, which I hope it is. You know, I like Absolutely. Azure. Uh, or somebody else's cloud. Somebody else's cloud is sure. fine too, or okay. on-premises uh, infrastructure that you already have. That's no problem at all. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm assuming I would have to install a little piece of software on my on-prem stuff so that it can be visible to the DevOps so we can publish to it. That's right. That's exactly okay. right. I got you. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, while we're waiting for, for that, uh, Guatello, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, how do I set up multi-tenant deployment? With the main repository and a different selection of plugins from another repo for each tenant. Oh, wow. That sounds really complex. That's 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 some advanced stuff. Um, the nice thing though is that yeah, you can. Uh, that YAML is very very flexible. Okay. Uh, and so you can in fact um, just run some Git commands if you if you have a deployment to go to say production and you want to bring in other plugins from another repo, you can just run Git clone. Okay. Um, you can use submodules. You can uh, use Git LFS. Uh, so you've got a lot of options on how you want to orchestrate your source code, uh, and then send it off to deployments. And so you can, you know, decide which um, which builds are going to run based on the the deployment target, for instance. Okay. Okay. That that makes a lot of sense to me. So. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I was going to say, with the different ways that you can pivot and write the code there, I guess you can set up that logic to 
run different sets based on outcomes. That's exactly right. Okay. Um, and you can do a lot of conditions. You know, if, if this step fails, move to this step. If this step succeeds, go to this step instead. So you can kind of, um, you can really just build a whole graph of the directions you want to take. You can fan out, you can fan mm -hmm. back in, um, wait on different resources. So you can kick off some builds in parallel, some okay. steps in parallel, uh, and then wait for all of them to finish before collecting all their output zipping it up or whatever, yeah. um, creating an artifact from it and moving on. And I'm, I'm thinking of things like Xamarin apps where I might kick off parallel builds, one for here's the iOS version, here's the Android version, and then at the end collect them together and publish the result. Yeah, that's a really cool idea. Uh, one mm -hmm. thing I see people do is um, they've got a back end that's .NET Core, they've got a front end that's TypeScript, uh, and so kick off the builds for each of those in parallel. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, uh, Kirsten has another question for us. Ooh, looks like we've got some results. Oh, we let, do. Let's get Kirsten's question yeah. first. Can I access an on-prem database with my unit tests? I'm guessing Kirsten's referring to that are running on Azure DevOps. That feels like a firewall question. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, I, would, I would not do that myself. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what I would actually do is uh, then move my build into uh, an on-premises build agent. Okay. Uh, and that way, you can you feel a little bit more comfortable about the, the security violation or the security separations that you're making. Oh yeah, yeah. I've I've actually seen some folks where they'll create an a, a Docker image that's using Postgres or some other database, and they seed that image with whatever test data they want, so that when they do want to run their tests, they pull that that test database right. that's seeded with that stuff, and they connect to that. That way, there's no no risk of damaging something behind a firewall or on production. Right, right. Yeah, so. that makes me feel a lot better than touching production with a unit test. Yes. All right, so what do we got? What do we got? Right, right. So what, what's, happened, <laughs> what's happened is, um, so we've done the Docker build, and what that does is it pulls down all your layers um, and, and sets everything up. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, um, we go ahead and install it. We do the .NET restore. We do the .NET build. Um, and that's that. And then we've got a Docker image. Very okay. cool, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that and that's just stuff that you already had. You had your Docker file set up in your repository. Yeah, we we spent some time working on that uh, previously, and it, it's been running great for me locally. But you've already got it published out to a registry. I do, I do. Uh, and so, why don't we uh, take this Look then oh, and man. let's deploy it? Okay. Because I've actually got uh, a an Azure web app ready to go to receive it. I do. Yeah. <sighs> It's called, oh man, it's like Christmas. ethompsondemo.azurewebsites.net. Okay. And I think all that's there now is, yeah, hello world. Right, let's, let's zoom in on that. This is the simplest web app ever. Th this, is, this is live coding yeah. on Twitch. Yeah, if I view source, <laughs> you won't even see an HTML tag. <laughs> it's, it's text. Printf hello world. Or, nice. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's set up a release. And so the release pipelines uh, functionality in uh, Azure Pipelines is, is also incredibly powerful. So I'll just click on that, create a new pipeline, and I'm uh, going to select Azure App Service Deployment. That's, sure. That's where we want to go. Absolutely. But again, this could be an on-premises uh, sort of setup. You can you know, deploy to IIS. Uh, you can mm. deploy to other clouds. It doesn't have to be Azure. Sure. But, okay. uh, but Azure's the one that I prefer. So. Um, and we can set up all sorts of crazy stages. And again, if you saw Donovan's keynote, uh, fanning out, fanning in, uh, very complicated. We're going to have one. Sure. We only need only one need stage one. right now. We're going to call it deploy to production. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie this deployment, this release, to the build that we just did so that we can grab the build number uh, out of the, uh, that got published. The, the completed Docker image that was published. That's right. That's right. Okay. So um, you, can, you can tie it to all sorts of artifacts so that you can trigger basically when a GitHub repository gets updated. But we want to tie it to a build. Sure. And, and every time I start walking through continuous integration or continuous deployment, these, these visions of the mousetrap game go through my head. You know, you know what yes, I'm saying, right? I do. It's like, I know how to put this together, but do I need the bathtub with the guy flipping into it? Or no, maybe you do. Maybe I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's uh, part of Azure now is the bathtub flipping guy. Yeah, the bath. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I think we announced that today. It, oh, fantastic. Yeah. Guy in a red shirt mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna. Uh, so I'm gonna actually use a, a newer version. This is actually the preview version of the app service deployment. 
uh, and I'm going, because that's the one that I think has uh, the best functionality and the best support for uh, containerized deployments. Okay. And that's, that's exactly what we want, right? So uh, I've got an Azure subscription. Oh, I think I need to authorize it. So I'm gonna have to log in really quickly just to tie the Azure DevOps account to the Azure portal. Right, because because DevOps, while it has the Azure name, isn't the same as your hosting Azure plan. That's exactly right. For all your Azure services. There we go. I'll stay yes, signed I in. Connect them manually. That's right. So you just connect them up because yeah, you could you might want uh, one Azure DevOps account to talk to a different Azure uh, portal account. Okay. Now, if I do have other people in my organization, I want to make sure that they can't see or touch those subscriptions. They're prevented from seeing that's, that, that's right? That's tied, yeah, that, that's, you, once the okay. authorization's done, you can do that as an administrator. Um, you don't have to do, you know, you don't have to mess with it okay. ever Good. again. Nobody can do anything. Um, so that, now that's all linked up. Um, and so, yeah, that subscription is now, is now nice and locked. Uh, and so I can say, again, we've got all sorts of options. You can deploy a mobile app, you can deploy Azure Functions. Um, I wanna do a web app for containers, and I'm gonna do it uh, to a Linux host. And once I select that, it actually figures out all of the, the web apps that I have that satisfy that condition. Uh, again, E. Thompson demo is the one I want to use. Mm -hmm. uh, registry. So this is our container registry that we set up. That we published to in the previous build. That's right. Build. Okay. That's right. Okay. And that's the, give that the fully qualified URL. And then the image that we want to use is fritz.streamtools. And we'll use the build ID. So we. Basically, we published a build ID, that's the tag uh, in the Docker image, and we'll just reuse that. Grab so. it and carry it along to this process. That's exactly right. That's why we okay. linked okay. the build previously, so that we could use that build ID and Get know. that output information. That's exactly right. Okay. That's exactly right. So now we save it, and then we can create a release. It's that easy. Oh, uh, man. And we can watch it go just like, just like before. It'll take take just a little bit of time to you know, spin up a, uh, um, a host and, and start doing the deployment. Okay, there we go. Uh, two of two tasks. And it's, it'll three, find three. that third okay. task. And so this is actually the, the money task. This is the one that's actually doing the deployment. Copying that image out yeah. and spinning it up. That's right. Oh, man. That Very exciting, so right? Cool to see. Yes, yeah. right? Because it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm a right-click deploy guy for how many years? I know, uh, I know, I'm sorry, my buddy, I'm sorry My buddy Damien would, is crying right now. I hope he's watching and, and I'm sure he's saying, friends don't let friends, right-click publish. Back in the day, before continuous integration really became a thing, right. we did right-click deploy and we had a folder on disk, we, we zipped everything up and then we took that zip file, we handed it off, you know what I'm saying. I do know. We handed I did. it off to our friend in, op in operations, and right? We, and we both come in at three in the morning, and we take that zip file and put it out on the appropriate server, and it was blessed, and we ran our smoke tests, and hopefully we got to go to sleep by seven in the morning because right. everything worked. Right. Seeing the, the deployment like this, it's I, I want to cry. It's I know. like 15 years ago, this was a pain in the neck to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You'd get the whole team together in the conference room. You'd buy them pizza because you had to. And you printed out Word docs. <sighs> right. This is, this is all the steps. Now, Ed, you're going to do these steps, and Jeff, you're going to do these, and Ron, you're going to have these. And everybody had, here's your mission that you have to do, and it's 3 in the morning, and you're all bleary-eyed, right. and you're praying that it works. Right. It's all totally manual. So many things yes. that can go wrong. So many typos that you can make, especially because it's 3 in the morning. It's 3 in the morning. Yeah. No, you've got to automate all that stuff. Yes. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Um, so, so this this should be just about done. We'll give it we'll give it one more minute. Okay. Um, and we have a question from is that uh, K Labran or is it Clabran? Can the YAML be run locally, or should we look into using a build script the devs can run locally, and the YAML file calls into its steps? Right. Right. So right now the the YAML can't be run locally. I think that we're working on basically a. a a local executor so that you could run the YAML locally. Um, kind of like kind of like how I have an Azure storage emulator locally. That's exactly right. Ah. Yeah. So but I don't uh, uh, I don't have anything to announce there for no, sure. No, no. But it's it's a concept that is yeah. being explored. That's right. But okay. what but that what I like to do is actually do have the build script. That way I can run it locally, I can debug it locally because you know 
spinning up a, a, a new build is quick, but it's not instantaneous. It's so much quicker if I don't have to do that. If I can just mm -hmm. do it locally uh, and find out what's wrong with my with my build script, uh, yeah. so I can do that debugging, uh, and then I, um, yeah, and then my I have a build step that is just run the script. Okay. Uh, but that not everybody agrees with me, and so there, there's healthy debate on all sides. Well, and, and we just did that here, right? We ran the build script that built using the Docker file to actually compile and give us the image. That's exactly right. And so we had a good feeling that it was going to work fine because we'd both run this Docker, yeah. this Docker file already. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just had to get version numbers lined up, That's, right? The that, chase of the version. Files. Yeah, I know. Version number. That is tricky, isn't it? Uh, yes. So we're moving along. Yeah. So um, that is still deploying. You know, sometimes it uh, it takes a little while longer. But right, hopefully, if you are running this for for test or you're running it for production, right, you're not you're not sitting there waiting with bated breath for it to be oh, no. deployed. Right? No, no, you'll just get an email when it's done. Okay, right. Usually you're not usually you're not on camera. You know, sweating the minutes. <laughs> no, we're not on camera, <clears throat> sweating anything like that. So uh, right. Okay. So hey, while that's going, why don't uh, we take a look at what it actually set up in the GitHub repository? Because it's actually done some cool things. Okay. So, and this is why you were saying that you needed to fork and have your own version. You needed to commit. What did it put into the GitHub repository? That's right. Let's take a look. I don't have a tab for that. Let me go open it. There we go. So yeah, this is the, the forked version. And the first thing you'll notice right here is that there's been a new commit by Azure Pipelines. Okay. And so what it's actually done is it's set up that, that YAML file, azurepipelines.yaml right there. And this was what we modified. That's exactly what you did in the, in the web browser. That's exactly right. Okay. And so now uh, I can just keep making changes. I can just git clone this repository. I can do it right here if I want to make changes to the way the build process works and it gets checked in. It's called configuration as code. The idea is that you want the way that your code gets built versioned alongside the code itself. That way, as you change your build process, um, it, it gets reflected there. So oh, I can yeah. roll back to a previous version, and I've got the old build process that reflected that. Or even if, if I fork create a branch because I'm building a new mm -hmm. uh, feature or I'm building a new project, that it, maybe I'm adding a Xamarin application to this, or I'm adding... Right. Uh, in, in our case, we're building a Visual Studio extension. Right. Well, I need to change the build steps because there's now a step to build with Visual Studio. That's exactly right. But you okay. don't want that in the master branch because that it's code doesn't exist yet. yet. Uh, right. Okay. Right. Okay. So this is really powerful. The other thing that it's done is it's set up some webhooks. So now, uh, anytime somebody creates a pull request, it will actually run this, uh, this build validation. It will run our continuous integration build. So if I uh, make a change to the readme, Maybe I want to clarify this. What, is, what does OBS stand for? Uh, Open Broadcaster Software. Right. So maybe I want, to, I want to call that out so that people who aren't familiar with it will know. Sure. I can open a pull request. Create a pull request. There we go. And there we are. And now what you'll see is we've got this check field here. So what it's actually doing is every time somebody opens a pull request, it will go to Azure Pipelines to start a build for this change that we made right there. Oh, very. Now, OK, that's pretty cool that it's running the build. But it's running the build for the readme. Is there a way that I can put a filter on that so that it doesn't run for markdown file? Um, yeah, you, so you can, you, in your build script, you could like maybe take a look at what you wanted to do, um, would be the easiest way to do that, okay. I think. Um, because you might want to do some, something with markdown files. You might want to make change, you know, you wouldn't want to do a full code build necessarily. No, But you might lint the, lark, lint the markdown. Ah, okay, okay. Now, you set that up to trigger whenever there's a pull request. There's a question in the chat room asking, well, can I, can I schedule this, you know, perhaps based on a cron? Sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so you can set up, uh, on, so this is our, yeah, this is our continuous integration build. It'll build every time somebody pushes something to master, I'm sorry, dev, your default yeah, branch is dev. dev. Yep. Uh, somebody pushes something to dev on GitHub. Okay. Or some, every time somebody opens a pull request. I could also uh, create a new build pipeline uh, that runs maybe at a certain time. Right, so I can, uh, let's just go ahead and select that YAML build. 
and I've got all these triggers here now. So the default oh, it's right one, there. yeah. So the default one uh, is to trigger based on uh, continuous integration check-ins, but I can add a scheduled build to run as well. Very there you straightforward. Go, chat room. And you got to watch out easy. for the, you got to watch out for these time zones, man. Uh, now that so I live in the UK, and so I've got some uh, some continuous integration builds that kick off at midnight every night, which yeah. which is a little bit different when you're here. When you're uh, in, the in Las Vegas, yeah, yeah right. I was Pacific like, time, what? That's uh, nine hours ahead. Yeah, I was like, where, why are all these builds running all of yeah. a sudden? Uh, so, <laughs> pro tip: time zones are terrible. They're not terrible. They're confusing. They're confusing. So, okay. So while we were while we were looking at that, it turns out that our uh, deployment finished. So let's take a look at what happened. Uh, it ran and updated to point to my container registry and fritz.streamtools number 77. So let's, let's actually go load up that website. So it was hello world, we're gonna hit reload, and hey. Oh man, that, look at that. So that these is your stream tool. Yeah, that we've been building, right? I've got that current viewers widget that I use and mm -hmm. the current followers, and it, those, are, those are just pulling test data now because we haven't registered any information. Okay. So where, where you had, put variables in for deploying to the container registry, I have some configuration information that we put into our app setting around like my Twitch credentials. Got it. So that, so that the bot can pull down and appropriately access my channel and pull that information. Otherwise, I just have a test piece of data that just right, right. updates occasionally so you can see that it works. But we can do things like um, if we go up to, if we go to follower goal up top there and pull that down, configuration, and this gives my, so this is a little configuration thing. Until we fill out some of these, it'll reload that preview and give us the full um, information, a little bar, right? One of those gauges. Everybody likes to have a thermometer. How Absolutely. close are we to goal? So that's what this will do. Cool. So, oh my gosh, it, it works and does the thing. Now, when I'm ready to deploy the next version, mm -hmm. right, when I, when I finish my, put my when, when I get ready my, um, my next feature and I'm ready to deploy that, it, will I always be triggering the release, or is there something that I can do to say only trigger the release when this happens, right? Now, you pointed out particularly, and I'm thinking out loud, that I use that dev branch. This is where I'm working, but master is is my production quality. Right, because you use Git flow. Yes. We'll I have, have a conversation branches. about that later. Oh, no. <laughs> I've been a bad developer. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sorry. Not a problem. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, please. Oh my gosh. So I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> so so what we've done is the the release that I set up uh, is triggered manually right now. Okay. Um, so there's there's no sort of uh, automation yet. Okay. But what we could do is we could set up uh, just like you, you had build triggers. Mm -hmm. We can trigger a release based on a build. So every time we do a continuous integration build. Um, we're going to upload something to the container registry. Every time that, that happens, we could trigger a release to a staging server, for okay. instance. Um, and so, so I could do that smoke test, that's make right. sure that it loads up and has my, in my case, my Twitch configuration loaded properly for this. That's right. That's right. Okay. So what we what we did is we just added this one stage, deploy to production. I could add a new stage, um, and let's call it. Staging. Let's see if I can remember how to how to set the uh, here. Actually, no, that's not what I want to do. Let me let me get rid of this. And I love how flexible because I've built this with ASP.NET Core. It's just a little website. It's it's an easy sample that we can push around like this, and how flexible the DevOps tools are at picking up and just run with it, and let's deploy and package it. Oh, right. So, uh, and let me change this. So, and this is something I actually do with my blog, which is perhaps a bit of overkill. Um, so, what's going to happen here is the first thing that happens is in this deployment, and this is the sort of thing that you might have for an automated continuous deployment sort of setup, uh, is it's going to deploy to staging. Yeah, and then I can add some approval gates. So I could add myself, for instance, as an approver here. Mm. So now, 
we have actually need a manual approval before we go to production. Yes. So it will yes. go to staging all the time. Every, every change you make goes to staging because that's, it's, it's a staging server. Who cares? Right. right. Um, but production, of course, is a little bit more important. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So what you can do is you can go to the staging server, validate that everything's working correctly, and then deploy to production when, when you're happy. Very cool. OK. So that was a manual process. Is there, I, I'm assuming there's also automated processes, sure. automated gates. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the most obvious one, again, is um, you, you could do a time-based trigger. You could do a trigger based on the um, uh, a build success. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Could I run integrated, uh, integration tests with something like Selenium and based on the results of those tests, Ooh. decide, oh, yes, my, my, here's my automated smoke tests, deploy. Yeah, that's that, absolutely. Um, you can even do uh, something that... Uh, let me click on that again and edit it. So the, there we go. Oh, I didn't save that. Anyway, uh, the, there are all sorts of these deployment conditions. So you can do gates. So uh, here's, a, here's a really naive one. Um, five minutes after the staging goes, go to, <laughs> go to production. You know, if nobody's running screaming, <laughs> then you don't cancel it and it'll just automatically go. That's, that's pretty naive. But um, the more interesting things, I think, are, you know, yeah, you can hit a REST API. You can run an Azure function. So some, something somebody did was Twitter sentiment analysis. Oh. Wiring up Twitter sentiment analysis. So you can roll back uh, a, a deployment if people on Twitter are complaining about it. <laughs> so, so there's all sorts of clever okay. things that you can do. Maybe if somebody files a bug against you, you roll back. So that's that's query work items. I, I could put I could put a command in my chat room and, and moderators could roll back. <laughs> that's right. That's dangerous. It is. It is. Yeah. So there's all sorts of uh, there's all sorts of clever ways that you can um, you can build your workflow. Very and cool. It, stuff. That's what it is. It's a very customizable workflow engine. And and there's notifications hooked up to these steps, right? I'm not just going to suddenly be like, oh, guess what? Version 78's in production. <laughs> right. No. Uh, you'll you'll get an email, um, and in fact, the the email that you get when when we had that um, staging to production setup, uh, you'll get an email, and you can just click button to approve if you're oh. the approver that's that's notified. Okay, and then the the deployment process happens, and as we saw, two three minutes later, boom, it's just up and running. Yeah. D does it gracefully deploy and swap that out? Sure, you can do blue green deployments. You could yeah. do um, you know you could do some sort of DNS update or you know mm -hmm. there it's it's staging incredibly slot flexible. And swap. You can you can do a uh, 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 what do they call that in, a in Azure? The you can swap a slot. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, the staging, uh, whatever. I, right. I don't want to get the name wrong. Right. Because same. I'm going to. Same. Same. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, I, I love a blue-green deployment. Yeah. Uh, it's probably overkill for where you are today, but I think you're going to get there. Um, there. There's a question here in the chat room. Speaking of integration tests, like like we're talking about, because I really want to make sure that I deploy this properly. Uh, do the DevOps agents have SQL Express or MS Local DB or SQL Server Developer Edition if they have to work with a database? Right. Do they have one of those? Right. Uh, they the the agents themselves do not have a database, but you could talk very easily to um, SQL Azure or something. Or uh, that this is an example of where you might want to run your own agent locally. And of course, it doesn't have to be locally in your data center. It could be something that you've provisioned in, in Azure yourself. Okay. Now, I'm going to go to the last question from, mm -hmm. from Kirsten. Kirsten's been pretty engaged during this, uh, this session. Thanks so much for joining us. Can I use a deployment group to deploy an, to an on-prem test and then only de uh, deploy to on-prem production if the test passed? Yeah. That yeah. feels... That's, that's, I, that's some advanced stuff, but yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's, it's really just a very flexible workflow engine, so you can just wire it up to if this, then that, if this, then that. Very cool stuff. Oh my gosh, Ed, thanks so much for helping me out with this. Thank you. I, I've got to get together with you about this afterwards. I know I'm going to get my hands slapped. Don't tell Donovan. <laughs>